Hello everyone, welcome back to Johnny's NASDAQ YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, creating your own self-hosted RSS aggregator or reader website. I have been searching a free online service to check the update from hundreds of uh, websites I collected. Unfortunately, most of the websites they don't update it that often since they are small blogs, they are small sites. But when it's updated, I would like to read it at the first time because those such information actually what I'm interested on. But to get the update is a problem for me. I can go to those websites every day to check if there's any news. So RSS aggregator is a perfect service for me. But unfortunately, I couldn't find any useful free online service plan for me to track in those updates with hundreds sources. So now I did my search online to search the best self-hosted RSS reader. I got two great blog posts to talk about those best self-hosted RSS feed readers, aggregators. They did mention quite a few products. Eventually, it's coming to four products I was checking. Tiny Tiny RSS, Fresh RSS, Mini Flux, and Stinger. There's a good review here regarding all those free self-host applications. Miniflex seems comes out a good solution. So now let's talk about the Miniflex. Miniflex already comes to version 2 already. It's got 4.6k stars and was recent updated last week. So there's a lot of advantage why I like this one. It's uh, simple, easy to deploy. Also the UI is not that fancy, simple enough for me. And also it's responsive, means I can read it from all kinds of devices, cell phone, tablet, computer, of course. The documentation is good enough for me to start to look at how to deploy it, especially using a Docker to install. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to use Docker to install Miniflex on your own VPS and also if you have your own domain, how you can integrate it. All will be finished in a couple of minutes. It's a very simple process to follow to get your own RSS reader website. From Miniflux website the home page, you will find the documentation link. Click on it, there's uh, installation instructions. There are many ways to do configuration installations. They showed you all different ways. The easiest way to do it from my point of view is using Docker. Assuming you already have your VPS, assuming you already installed the Docker, Docker compose those necessary components on your VPS, then just a copy paste and you can bring your own website up in a couple of minutes. If you haven't have your own VPS own domain, you don't know how to install Docker, Docker Compose, you can look at my website here and you will find out all necessary steps in those videos to show you how to get your free domain, free VPS, how to install Docker, Docker Compose, even further like a Portainer, Nginx Proxy Manager, those things. But for now, we are gonna just use this Docker installation instruction and put it into Play with Docker. So Play with Docker is uh, like Docker Lab, Docker Sandbox for you to play with it. 
if you want to learn how to use Docker and you want to spin up your Docker in this environment for testing, that's a perfect purpose for this website. So you log in and you will have four hours to play in this sandbox environment. You can add your new instance. You will get this command line input window to get you to copy paste the command you would like to enter. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a docker compose.yml file. So we're gonna use in vi command to create this file. And you, what you need to do is just paste in, nothing need to change it. In actual deployment, I will mention the next chapter in this video to show you how to change it, port, change the username, password, those things, since we will need those to be changed as well. So we're going to use in this template since it already have admin username admin password in here so you may want to change it based on your usage but in docker playground nothing will need to be changed type i we get into the insert mode in the vi and the paste or configuration in as mentioned we don't want to change anything here we just copy paste write and quit so we're gonna have this docker compose.yml file and let me just need to launch it docker compose app what is it gonna do you're gonna pull the images from docker hub and then spin up those two dockers for us once done we should be able to open the port which is port 80 from the web browser. There will be two dockers, one for database, one for Miniflux application. So it seems I'm finished didn't show us port 80 here sometimes it will show sometimes it just um, not showing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try give it try say open port put port 80 here so the page is not working that means the docker is still not running yet so we're gonna control C stop it so we will see there's a docker here but it doesn't comes up. So let's do docker compose up and dash D put it into the background. Now we are able to see both docker has been started. They are started properly since we are able to see a healthy status and also it will show the port 80 here. So let's open it now. So we are able to see the username password login window. Let's type default username password. So let's add admin and test one two three. Right away we logged in. Now let's browse through. So we don't have any subscription or any feed in this configuration since it's new so you should be able to add feed in so add feed export it import it you can have your feeds from other self-hosted application or free web online service list and to add it in here you can create the different categories for your feeds so here is a setting page now you can change the username password you can change your time zone here as well the theme has two different types of scene, dark scene and the light scene, 
or system that's how we can easily spin up your RSS aggregator reader website so I already showed you how to deploy it from Docker Playground using Docker Compose if you have a container we can do the same thing it's just also very simple to do uh, I'm gonna present it using my container settings but we have to create uh, our custom template since there's no template for mini flux you just click your custom template I already have my own for the WordPress uh, you can add a new one in right now so just make it small changes for the title and then we're gonna copy the whole configuration in with some changes of course the first change will be the port as I mentioned before most likely your port 80 has been used by your other applications we're gonna use in different port 8010 also you don't want to use your default test 1 to 3 so we may can change to something else for me right now I can keep it as default then I will change it later on so that's the most two important changes other than that you can keep other settings exactly the same and save your custom template we get this mini flux template then we can deploy the stack this will automatically create a couple of things create a new network and create two dockers I'm gonna manage it by container the deployment will take probably one or two minutes it's the same process as you saw it before they're gonna pull those images from docker hub and also then spin them up let's go to let's go to containers so we gonna see two mini flux db1 mini flux mini flux dash one those two containers they're up and running the reason why you see two stacks here is because I created one before this one doesn't have anything there that's the one we just created so basically this one we can remove it so you're gonna see a new networks created called uh, miniflex default so no duplication so that means all good You should be able to see the resource usage for your mini flags. As mentioned in the template, we use in port 8010. Since I'm using Oracle Free VPS, you might want to open port 8010 from your network security groups. I'm using allow common port group. Just click on it. make sure you have 8010 open which is here I already have 8010 open if not basically you just need to add a lure put the source for any and then TCP port destination will be 8010 and then you gave a description so you know this is for mini flux so that's what I did for my firewall rule once that ready you should be able to launch it using this port 8010 and of course you need to know the public IP default username admin default password test one two three right away you logged in same as we did from docker playground we already have our mini flux 
RSS website up and running, but it's running on HTTP, it's running on the public IP and the port number. We want to use HTTPS, we want to use our own domain, so in this case, we're going to use another file to generate in our Docker Compose YML file to deploy. So we're going to use in trafic.yml this file. Of course, we're going to change a bit, but mostly we just copy and paste in. We're going to use in a container custom template to do this work again. And we're going to copy paste in the whole thing we found from here. There are a couple changes we're going to make. So that's the original file. We're going to make a couple changes. We're going to change the email to admin. We're going to change our domain name. We're going to use rss51sec.org base URL also need to change. So there's three places to change labels, base URL, and the email address. Once we did that, we can save it. So this is going to be for mini Flux version 2 HTTPS. At the same time, we also need to create a record for RSS.51sec. We point into this container's public IP, which is 192.18.146.148. So I already created that. Now we just need to deploy this stack. It may take one or two minutes depending on uh, how fast you can pull those images. You will get success message on your top right of this web page. So Miniflux wasn't started properly here. Let's look at the containers. Gave it restart. Now it's running. We got three new Dockers, Miniflag, Postgres, Database, and all traffic, reverse web application. So now, since all is in healthy status, we're going to give it a try. We have our RSS domain pointing to that server. Just one or two seconds, you should be able to get this login page. You should be able to go into this setting page with default username and password. The first thing you need to do is change the password here. So that's pretty much everything I want to show you in this video regarding how you can use RSS, how you can generate in RSS for your website, for your bookmarks. You may take a look another RSS Hub website, which gonna give you more ideas how to convert any website into RSS format. Then you can subscribe it, you can get the feed and add into your RSS reader website. So that's all for today. I hope you got some useful information and you are enjoying this video. Uh, give me a thumb up if you like it and uh, subscribe channel if you haven't. See you in my next episode.